This is ATA 2017, episode number four with Dr. Brooks Tiller of Healthy Hunter. Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Roundabout. This is Buse Hutchin, and we are live at ATA 2017. And we got Brooks, Dr. Brooks Tiller with us from Tennessee. Dr. Brooks, welcome. Right, thanks for having me. Thanks. I'm glad to be back. Hey, what the heck is going on at ATA this year? Man, it's it's always fun. And you've got all kinds of new innovative things and you've got the old stuff and it's just a it's a great mix of of just everything that's amazing about archery. Plus, you have all the people and all the great guys you get to hang out with and the, all the the great hunters that you get to see and uh, it's just it's just a great time just to be out there and see what's going on in the archery world. Yeah, and tell me who you're pro staffing for. I'm here with Fire in the Hole Broadheads. It's um it's a it's a spin on the on the traditional uh, broadhead. It's got a ring on there that's just gonna it's gonna cut a hole in the deer, and uh, and we've got we've got some people, you know, that, that are report reporting like kills of uh, seven feet, ten feet, and that's as far as the deer goes and drops dead. So it's pretty pretty impressive. Well, how does that all work? Well, it's, it's just a traditional broadhead, three blade, and then it has a ring around those three that whenever it hits the deer, the the mechanical, I mean the. Uh, the, the kinetic energy just takes a plug out almost like a almost like you would with a rifle take a plug out of that deer and just uh, if you get a kill shot the deer's not going far at all so it's punching it out yeah yeah it's just punching a big hole in the deer it's pretty impressive wow any are you on any other process um i'm mean, here with fire in the hole but i, I work with uh, several other ones um throughout the space and most of them just relate to the health and fitness industry as far as getting people healthy and 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 in encouraging hunters to get healthy as far as like um as far as the uh the harnesses and things like that helping them with balance and and just you know helping other people and uh, like i said there's there's others that are here that we've worked with before um hha as far as sites bear archery and uh, some of those guys you know here go visit them hang out in their booths a little bit so it's, it's a big time and always good just to see everybody yeah, like I've been telling folks, it's a huge industry. I mean, $37 billion industry, plus or minus a couple of bucks. But once you get into it, you know, um, we're all friends and it's a really close family. Yeah. You know, it really is. And uh, that's why I, this is my first time at ATA, but I've talked to over 310 people that have been here, you know, through my podcast over the year. So it's really exciting. You just mentioned something about health. And talk to me about what you're doing speaking. Yeah, um, so... I really got a, got into uh, more of an inspirational speaking role as not only a doctor of physical therapy, but a strength coach, but, but being able to bring my faith into it as well as incorporating hunting. So being able to minister to hunters in order to encourage them to, to be healthier and be better uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically uh, to be you know, whether, in, especially uh, men, because I'm a man, and honestly, you know, I have, I have a couple sisters and a wife, and and I still do not know much about women. So, um, you know, I, I hope that some of my message could come across and women could benefit. But my main goal is to help help those guys out there to be better men, better fathers, better husbands, and, and better hunters, you know, be, be healthier and be more active. But the big thing is just, you know, being being a better man, and that's where my my inspirational speaking really comes from. And I get to speak to, you know, youth groups, men's breakfast meetings, and, and uh, wild game suppers at churches and things like that. And it's really exciting to be able to share not only my faith and my love and my passion that, you know, that God's gave me this passion for the outdoors, but be able to share that and mix in a little health and fitness that I've learned along the way and, uh, and help help men, you know, be better and be, be better overall. You just told me you wrote a book now. Uh you didn't bring me a copy. No, no. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you tell us about the book and why you wrote it? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's called The Healthy Hunter, and uh, I've got a few copies ordered, and they just didn't they didn't come in time to bring them up here. But um, the big thing is, is for it, it was kind of inspired by my grandfather, who who I lost when I was I was seventeen, going on eighteen, and and in that time, um, you know, that eighteen to twenty three, if you will, if I'd have had my grandfather a couple more years, I feel like my uh, my path to being a, a better man, a, a better husband, better father, and, and and a better better hunter would have been really uh, the, the curve would have been would have been a little bit easier on me. Um, having him around for a few more years, being able to have the knowledge of those questions that I didn't have, you know, when I was 15, 16, I didn't know to ask some of those questions. Um, but you know, and, and for me, it was just being able to inspire and to help. Uh, you know, if I can help one person 
be a little bit healthier to help a granddad spend one more day with their grandkid in the woods, that one day could change that grandkid's life completely. And, you know, and the whole premise of the book is is providing a simple, uh, basic exercise routine, uh, simple, basic recipes, a wild game, and just kind of the premise of why we want to be healthier, why, you know, we're here on this earth to pass it on. And if we can pass on our love of hunting and the outdoors, if we can pass on, you know, the, the faith and the spiritual out, the spiritual that we have inside us to the next generation, if we can pass that on, that next generation is going to be better. And, you know, if we just look at the hunting industry, we are... Every year, the the average hunter gets a little older, a little older, and there's fewer, fewer people. And if we can pass that on to the next generation, then then we're going to reverse that, and the the trend will be younger and younger hunters, and more and more hunters. And so, for me, if I can just, I mean, honestly, if it if it helps one person spend one more day with their grandfather, or their you know, in the woods, or their father in the woods, uh, it's all worth it to me. Now, talk to the listeners out there about. You know, they've never taken their kids out for whatever reason. They're busy and and life and and the kids are in sport, but all of a sudden they remember, hey, I'd like to take them out squirrel hunting or rabbit hunting. We're not talking big game. We're just talking spending time in the outdoors. How would you recommend they they get that done? You know, just finding a place to go. Um, That's the biggest thing is is whether it's just public land. I mean, there's there's public land in every state. No matter where you are, you can just go out and, and if nothing else, take take a camera. I mean, everybody's got a phone on their camera. Go out and see how many different, you know, species of animals you can just take a picture of, you know, and, and get the kids involved that way. Like, hey, you know, that, that's a squirrel, that's a bluebird, that's a robin. Um, you can go there and show them that and, and just kind of get them interested. And, you know, and if you know the different, like, there's an oak tree, there's a maple, you can even show them that because those things are things that I feel like um, we're losing a lot of. You know, people are like, oh, there's a white oak. And they're like, what? Which one? You know, and they don't know the difference between a white oak and a Bradford pear. And, um, you know, and, that's, and for me, I think just getting outside, uh, spend a day, um, even just, just a, you know, a park. Go to a park and just walk around. You know, it, it's it's a little uh, maybe easing people into it where they're not just thrown in the wilderness. You know, there, there's a trail that you're supposed to follow. You I mean, just take a walk on that trail and enjoy the nature. I mean, and, and for us, I mean, we're, we're stuck inside a lot, working under lights. And, and you know, there's there are some studies out there, uh, scientific studies, that, that talk about nature bathing. And people that walked 10 minutes out in the woods compared to somebody who just took a 10-minute walk in the middle of the city, their blood pressure goes down, their their heart rate goes down, their their mental clarity increases, and they're actually more productive at work, and they're, they're you know, have less stress, which is kind of interesting. It's like, just, you know, just get outside, you know, in a park somewhere. Even if you're in New York City, there's Central Park right there. Just take a walk through Central Park for 10 minutes. You know, I don't recommend maybe in the middle of the night, but, you know, like, you know just try to take a walk and enjoy the, you know, the sunshine, get the vitamin D from the sunshine, and, and just get the fresh air, because that fresh air is going to clean you out, you know, mentally and just make you feel better. Let's switch it up. Let's talk about two 16 and uh, what type of hunt you had? You know, it was it wasn't the best uh, hunt for me. Um, been been a, a little uh, preoccupied. My wife is we got the second baby on the way, and uh, so she's been a little sick. So some of my hunts have been decreased. But you know, and uh, that's just one of those things, one of those seasons of, of time. But you know, for 2016, I, I had a blast. I went and um, actually did a lot more filming than I did actually hunting this year. So I filmed a lot of buddies, uh, you know, um, a couple misses, and uh, a couple misses, and you know, a couple of good bucks taken on film, and uh, and and um, the biggest thing for me was is I have been hunting. We got a we got a, a few big bucks I've been chasing, and. Uh, We've got trail cameras of an eight, a nine, a ten, and an eleven. On the hit list or on? All yeah, all the hit list. They, they're all you know three or all three and a half to, and older. All of them, and uh, we got trail cam pictures of them. We've got pictures of them at eleven o'clock in the morning. We got them at midnight. We've got them just all times, and they were get really hard to pattern because um, in Tennessee our weather was one day it would be you know, a high of 17, two days later, it was 70 degrees. And so it's kind of hard to, you know, the, the, the deer didn't have a real pattern because they didn't know what, you know, when, if the weather, if, you know, if there was a doe in heat, they were chasing. If there weren't, they were just kind of moseying around eating. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, three times this year, I sat all day on this deer stand. Perfect. You know, the, the wind was right. The weather was right. Everything was perfect. And, uh, sat there 
And all three days, either the day before or the day after, we had pictures of that deer in the middle of the day. No. Yeah. So no. it was like they knew I was there, knew I was coming or something. But, you know, I mean, because, you know, working full time as a physical therapist and, and you know, I, I have to pick my days. And, and, I, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go this this Saturday. I'm taking off this Friday. You know, I'd go out there on Friday and the deer had been there Thursday and sat there for like an hour, you know, 30, you know, just like you sat there for an hour. Like you'd see him walk by and then like, the, you know, an eight would walk by and then like like the 11 would walk by, you know, like I have like two or three pictures in one day of this deer. And it's like the day before I got there or, um, or I would go on a Saturday and then, um, check the trail camera a couple of days later. And like, Oh, he was there on Sunday at one o'clock, you know, and just, you know, just walking by and it's a great corridor for him, but I just never got one of those. And, you know, I passed on a lot of other deer, small deer and does just waiting on it. But, you know, in Tennessee, uh, this week, uh, the, the season actually, we're here at ATA right now. It's uh, the 10th of January, but the season closes in the, uh, this Friday. So it's a doe only season. So I still got a little time to go out there and just put a little meat in the freezer. But, uh, you know, it's been fun. And I'm, right now I'm excited. Uh, turkey season's coming up. So it's kind of, right now I got that lull between deer and turkey where I just kind of. Well, shed hunting. You can start yeah, shed hunting. Do a little shed hunting and, you know, doing things. But uh, it's kind of interesting. Like we actually had a couple deer fighting. Um, just a few, like probably a week ago, yeah, on on camera, uh, we got a uh, big a big nine and a big ten fighting on on a trail camera about an hour before daylight, you know, real close to my stand, of course, you know, like two days after I was there, but you know, it's, it's one of those things, and and that's hunting, and that's, I mean, this is why I mean, we we hunt, we don't kill. I mean, I go out and I, I just love sitting out there watching the sun come up, watching the sunset, just being able to spend time and know that you know the good Lord created all this and somehow felt good enough that. He created me and let me enjoy it. And I'm just, you know, I feel blessed every moment I get to spend in the woods, whether I kill or not, Um, whether I see anything or not. It's just a great time to just be out there. Well, I'm thinking about, you know, ATA. And when you walk around and you're involved, what what are some of the innovations you've seen already? Um. I mean, it, you know, when it comes to archery stuff, I mean, the, the, the bows, every year, faster and faster and faster. And it's, it's very impressive, the things they're doing. You know, they're, it, it, it's, it's uh, you kind of see it in cycle. I mean, they, they get faster and faster. And, then, you know, the kinetic energy they have, I mean, it's, it's really impressive what they do. But for me, I, there's a lot, of, a lot of things out there. And, and you know, being like the, the kind of the, the healthy guy, like I said, at my house, we don't have any lava lamps or anything like that. I'm not that, I'm not, I'm not that organic. But uh, but I try to you know everything that I kill I eat and and there's a lot of a lot of products out there that are helping people take their meat and 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 preserve it you know whether it be a, a cooler that you can put in your backyard or you can put in your garage to let the deer age for a few days to let that meat kind of age up you know make so it's more tender or um, you know there, I've even found there's a um, one one group here that I've worked with it's called Carbo Mask and they're it's a face paint but it's it's car it's a uh, it's a uh, charcoal like carbon activated so it doesn't have any of the nasty oily junk in it so when you put it on your face it actually stays but you can sweat through it but it and it doesn't wipe off until you just take a little rag and water and it comes off real easy. But it doesn't have all the nasty chemicals and junk. And it's actually, um, it's well enough that my son Thor, we got some and uh, I put it on him, let him run around with it. It's, it's safe enough that I trust my one and a half year old to wear it, you know. So um, it's things like that. And I think a lot of guys are kind of getting more in tune with the, with just, I guess, the, um, the more natural things that, you know, instead of just the cheap way to do things. And, you know, like I mean, everything's just so amazing. I mean, you've got the clothing is getting better and better so you can actually wear less and stay warmer. Um, you know, and just, there's so many things out there just, just like, why did not I not think of that? You know? <laughs> and, um, but you know, there's, there's a lot of cool things. There's one, um, I don't know if you saw, but there's a, there's, it's like a little, a little dial that you can put on your pack or even on your, on your harness. Like if you're just wearing your safety harness and it has a little, little click that you can put your bow on there and like just, it carries your bow on your back, whether it's your harness, whatever, and it just clicks in really, really awesome little innovation. Like how did I not think of just making a little thing, putting a hook on it, you know, and that'll hold my bow. There's little things like that. I think that are making the industry grow and making it more accessible for not only, um, the everyday hunter, but for those guys that are wanting to get into it, you know, those guys are wanting to learn about hunting and it's making it more accessible because we've got, um, you know, we've got air bows now. We've got bows that, you know, that you can, you can get a bow for a couple hundred bucks. And so you don't have to go spend $2,000 for a setup, you know, 
you can get for one hundred fifty dollars, you can at least have a setup, or you can at least go out and shoot. Which I know I've got some family members; they're wanting to get into it and like, what do I need to do? I'm like, well, you know, you can't really shoot mine because. I'm 6'2 and I have monkey arms, so shooting my bow is going to be a little hard if you're shorter. But, you know, I, I've, got a, I've got a recurve. Like you can shoot it, you know, crossbows. You can get there. and So it's, it's opening the doors up for more people to be able to spend more time in the woods, which is, which is great. And it's just, you know, everything is just getting better. I mean, it's just technology and, you know, everybody using their phones and everything. You're like, oh, I got a picture of a deer, you know, today. You know, I better get out there tomorrow, you know. So it might have been helpful for me, but, you know, if I'd have had one of those cameras. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dr. Brooks Tiller, it's just been, it's been, been a blast having you on the show, and I can't wait till the next time. So on behalf of thousands of listeners across North America, um, you're great to have Dr. Brooks Tiller on the show, and we were Really appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. It's a blast to be here. And, and um, you know, Dr. Brooks Tiller at dot com. If you Dr. Brooks Tiller, if you, if you Google it, I'm the only one out there, and that's probably a good thing. But That's a good thing. Tell people how they can get hold of you yeah, on yeah. Facebook. So, Twitter. yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Brooks Tiller, just drbrookstiller.com. That's my website. And um, starting, to, starting to put up um, more more frequent exercises. You know, for the common guy, I mean, I'm not – I'm not, I don't try to show off my, my legs and my arms too much. You know, I don't, for me, it's not about me. It, you know, I want to help some other people. So maybe like a quick 10 minute exercise you can do in the morning uh, before you, before you get up. But yeah, so uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Dr. Brooks Tiller, just D-R-B-R-O-O-K-S-T-I-L-L-E-R. Dr. Brooks Tiller, pretty much everywhere. And you'll find me. Um, it's kind of nice. I've got everything kind of the same across all the platforms. But yeah, I mean, follow me, um, like me. Tweet me, whatever it is that you need to do, you know, and let me know because, uh, yeah, and you can also hashtag Healthy Hunter. Um, that's what I do. I use a lot of hashtags for that. So, you know, just if you're out there and you're 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 a hunter and you want to get healthier, just hashtag Healthy Hunter. I'll find you and uh, I'll give you a big thumbs up and, and applaud you for anything. But if you have questions, the website, Twitter, Instagram, any of that stuff, you can just holler at me and I'll gladly help you. Uh, no charge. This is a freebie right here. Again, thanks so much. It's never too early to think about food plots. Wait till Rendezvous has an ebook for you. Just simply text 33444 Food Plot to get your copy. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.